Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm your friend in Saxo. Today we're going to try to solve another algorithm problem. The name for this problem is the number of binary search trees. Given a list of distinct distinct numbers, count how many distinct binary search trees can be formed to store the numbers. For example, given the numbers one, two, three, we can form five distinct binary search trees. That's impossible. We uh, since we only got three numbers, how can we form five different uh, binary search trees? How can we do that? To be honest, I have no idea about this. One, two, three, one, three, two. One, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Well, that's exactly one, two, three, four, five. Five different binary search trees. But how can we do that? I have no idea about it. So let's jump into the solution. Dynamic programming top down. O n to the power of two times. An important observation we can make is the number of unique trees does not depend on the values of the numbers in the list, just on their count. Yeah, of course, it doesn't depend on the value, but depend on how many elements we have for that list or for that list. For example, the number of unique binary search trees can be formed to store 2, 3, 7, is 5 as well. This is easy to prove. Suppose that we have an algorithm to generate all the unique binary trees for a list of distinct numbers A1, A2, until AN. For any other list of distinct numbers B1, B2, until BN with the same length, we can use the same trees and just relabel the nodes. A1 becomes, A, becomes B1, A2 becomes B2, and so on. We can relabel the nodes uniquely since we know that there are no duplicates in either list. Thus, the number of unique binary search trees depends on depends only on the number of elements to be stored. A second observation that we can make is that we can split the split. Some people would call it that split. Uh, another, obs another observation we can make is that we can split the number into smaller subproblems if we fix a small piece of the problem that is otherwise variable. Note that this is the same approach we used for change-making problem, choosing the first coin and then sentence splitting problem, choosing the first word. In case of the binary search trees, the natural variable to fix is the item to be placed at the root of the tree. Consider again the example of items 1, 2, 3. It is not clear which one should be placed, should be placed at the root. In fact, any of the numbers is a valid choice. So we split the problem into three subproblems. A subproblem where one is, pla is placed at, at the root. A subproblem where two is placed at the root. A subproblem where three is placed at the root. In each case, we use uh, we we need to count the number of ways in which we can place the other nodes to construct the full tree. Let's take the cases one by one. Consider the case where one is chosen as the root of the tree. We need to place the other items two and four. In the end, we would like we would like to perform the following trees. Um, you may just uh, thinking like me. You you will think why he always put the two and three on the right side of the root node one. Yeah, so that that's um that's not right. Sometimes if it's not a strictly binary search tree, balanced tree, then uh, the two and three could be on the right side of it. it can be in here. Can be in here. Something like that. But since they are strictly unique binary search trees. And for this tree, it has a feature, which is the right side node would always greater or equal to the left side node. From here, we could know that the binary search tree, also called an ordered or shorted binary tree, it is a rooted binary tree data structure whose internal nodes each store a key greater than all the keys in the node's left subtree and less than those in its right subtree. 
uh, in another word, if you look at this graph, you would generally notice that the right node would always greater than the left node and also should be greater than the parent node wrote of it. So this is correct, I guess. And since both 2 and 3 are greater than the root 1, they must be placed in the right subtree. In other words, the number of unique binary search trees with 3 items and having the smallest item at the root is equal to the number of ways we can form unique binary search trees for 2 items and have each binary search tree become the right subtree of the root. We have just uh, reduced the case 1 of our problem to a smaller subproblem. The solution of the subproblem is computed as 2, since there are only 2 possible trees that can be formed with 2 items. Consider now the case where 2 is chosen as a root of the tree. We need to place the other items 1 and 3 to form the following trees. Here you would always notice that the left side would be greater than the right oh sorry, the right side would always be greater than the left side. The item 1 must be part of the left subtree of 2, while the item 3 must be part of the right subtree. In this case, there is only one way to place them. In general, we should count the number of the binary search trees that can be formed by the items on the left subtree, and the numbers of binary search trees that can be formed by the items in the right subtree. The total number of the trees that can be performed is the product of the two numbers, since we can choose any combination of two to pair them when we construct the full tree. Uh, so it becomes a combination problem whenever we got the left side or the right side tree change. In other words, we got a, a different uh, left or right subtree. We would say we got a new uh, combination for that. So that's why here, if we do that, so if we get the left subtree uh, combinations and we also get the, the right subtree com uh, combinations numbers, then we're going to use the product operator to um, find out the whole combination of it. Finally, consider the case where 3 is chosen as the root of the tree. We need to place items 1 and 2 on the left subtree. This case is symmetrical to the first case 1 fixed at the root. As we can see in the following diagram, so we will not discuss it. We can now write the implementation of the algorithm, given that the items are not important for solving the problem, only their counts. We can start by defining a helper function that only takes as parameter of the, the numbers of items. Okay, given by that, I'm not sure that I want to look at the solution. How about we do it by ourselves first? Uh, from the statistics, it seems like this is a very simple question. You see so many people clicked the sum up button here, and I haven't impl uh, implemented any solution yet. It is probably because that I think this, this problem is very hard, so that's why I didn't solve it before. But never mind, we are going to do it right now. Alright, I'm giving up. Uh, because I have no idea about it. I, I don't know how to solve it. So let's just let's just jump into the solution. We can now write the implementation of the algorithm, given that the items are not important for solving the problem, only their counts. We can start by defining a helper function that only takes as parameter of the number of items. It would be something like this. Uh, and in the end, our helper function would only take the length of that uh, last we gave it to that that we gave to him give to it the helper function should return one if the number of items is one otherwise you should comp compute how many trees can be formed by placing at the road one of the items then return the sum of all these numbers helper function this is a this is an integer a single item can be placed in a binary search tree in exactly one way because only we because we only got one item and for one item we can only form one binary search tree no items from an empty tree which is also unique so if the number of items less or equal than one we will just return one and at the beginning we get the result of zero Consider all the possible choices of having one item 
are the roads and the rest in the left and the right subtrees. Uh, how can we do that? We can for number items left in the range of this is actually a last. So we are not taking the, the length of it. We are taking the last of it. Anyway, we did an iteration for number items left in that range. We will iterate all those elements inside of that. The number of binary search tree in the left would be equal to the helper function of this number and the number items right equal to the whole numbers minus one and also gonna minus the items left which is this number and also we could get the right side span with such trace number by using the helper function in the end we're gonna combine combine the results by do the product of the by getting by getting the product of left side binary search tree numbers and the right side binary search tree numbers and we're gonna add that to the results. Since we are using the iteration, so we could uh, say get every level of that uh, binary tree. It could be start from zero level or start from the one, which uh, in that case, we only got two nodes or start with three. If we start with three, that would be something like this. So by doing this iteration over and over again, finally we could reach the number of items, the, the whole number of items, so that we could get the, the whole result, how many binary search trees that we can get if you give me this number of um, items. Yeah, I guess the explanation for this iteration I just said it's not correct. It's more like, you, uh, you know, for this range, it will start from zero to the whole number of it. And what it does is actually define how many items we should the left search tree to have. It's it's a it's a number start from zero and until that items, so that we could uh, calculate out all those possibilities where the left subtree have at the beginning it have zero elements, then it have one element, have two element, have three element, and so many different cases. And according to that, the, the right side of the tree would also get changed. For example, if the at the first, the left side equal to zero, then the, the, the right side would be equal to the whole number minus zero. And for this one would be, for the second case, it would be the whole number or the total length of that, of all those numbers that we have minus one, something like that. You could imagine this is the correct explanation for, uh, for what this code does. All right. Since now we know how to deal with it, how can can we just write it by our own for now? All right. After I did it by myself, I got an error like this. Let me do an analyze of what happened. Suppose that we got uh, three elements in total, one, two, three, and for each time for the left one, we'll get uh, we got zero on the left, or we get one on the left, or we got two on the left. For the right side, if we do it directly with 3 minus 0, 3 minus 1, 3 minus 2, that would, would be incorrect since you know this one would be equal to 3, this one would be equal to 2, this one would be equal to 1. Then if you add the left and the right together, you would find that all of them would just equal to 3. That, that makes sense because all of you have, or all those numbers, all those elements, all those items you have is three. And you you add up the left and the right. You you add the left and right and equal to three. Then how about the road nodes? Where it got where where it is right now? You you have no no roads node for now. So it's not correct. You you cannot say that if you add the left nodes and the uh, right nodes you would get the whole nodes no that's not the case of a tree for a tree it will always have the road node and the left nodes right nodes so instead of saying that those numbers are equal to something like this we're gonna minus the right nodes by one for each of them so that we could have a road node right in here so in this case for each right node, we're gonna minus it by one. And if we if we run this code again, it's working. It will output the result that we want. Let me now submit this problem. Okay, we got the time limit excited. That's pretty normal. Um, what we should do is to from function to import the IRU catch. 
Now, if I try it again, um, we'll get the correct result. We'll pass the letter code problem for it. So that's pretty. That's pretty easy. After we saw the, uh, after we saw the answer. <laughs> so I don't know if this really helps. Anyway, for us, it just uh, it will force us to think about the the order and the recursive function. And I must say, the recursive function is really super powerful that it can solve a lot of problems that, that we couldn't solve by human easily. You know, who can calculate out all those results with, with a human man? That, that makes sense. You, you have to do a lot of computation and you get it wrong, most likely. Um, but for the computer, it seems like it's it, it can deal it very quick and easy in, in a easy way. Um, okay, I think this is it. This is today's learning and I hope you enjoy this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.